Well, the first persuader in the community would be the poster, and it's always very deliberately designed. This year, the vote with your feet is a we try and reinforce the positive reasons to march and obviously with the results of the federal election still being prevalent in people's mind, we want to positively encourage people to vote with your feet. That says far more in four words than we could attempt to say with three paragraphs. To back up that poster, we produce the Vote With Your Feet badge, which just encourages people to talk about March 31. Once that poster is seen within the community, people then start talking about it. We can then supply that demand through the other publicity that we produce. The disarmament campaigner that I write comes out three times. We produce several designs of the leaflets, these general leaflets, and as I mentioned, they get translated into various different languages so that they cover very different sorts of the community. We make our decisions in a group. We have a publicity committee, and people who want to contribute participate in this. And this may mean that someone's got a good idea, may mean that they're an artist, may mean that they're a journalist and know how to put words together. So all of us combine our talents. But when we began discussing this, we had an idea of having foot imprints and uh, then someone thought about shoes and the idea developed around a table Partly we were laughing, but eventually I think we ended up with a very good poster. We thought of voting with your feet because we wanted to be active and show that if you were going to participate in a march, then you're contributing something. We also had this idea because this march takes place not very long after the last elections. Well, there you vote in the ballot box. But here, you're voting out on the street by taking part in a march, and the poster looks quite active. It's obvious that you don't always say the same things to every person that's going to come to a march when they've come for all sorts of different reasons. So, a leaflet that is directed to people in churches might be different to a leaflet that's directed to people in trade unions. And then, apart from major publicity activity, we have all sorts of news releases. And you don't write the same news release to an afternoon paper as you do to a morning paper, because they treat their news differently. City Extra, 25 to 10. Well, 280,000 people last year took part in the Palm Sunday peace marches around the country. And it was the largest expression against nuclear weapon yet seen in this country. In Sydney, over 120,000 people took part in the rally, and it's hoped that more will turn up this year when a public opinion survey will be conducted on nuclear ships and on ANZUS. Deborah Brooks is from the Nuclear Disarmament Coordinating Committee. She's with me this morning. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and thank you. Well, how many do you expect? That's always hard. Um, we're hoping for between 150 to 200,000 people. That would be more than last year? Yes. The slogan has been vote with your feet um, in view of the disarmament um, results in the last federal election. We urge people to vote with their feet. And uh, it says vote with your feet March 31, no nuclear weapons east and west.
vote with your feet. I wasn't very keen on it when I first heard it because I thought it had a very negative, downward sort of feet and mm, feeling about it. But when I saw the poster and it was, the way it was handled, the visuals really picked it up because it's very lively and bright and very modern. And it's sort of like a throwaway statement, vote with your feet, rather than vote with your feet, which sort of means absolutely nothing. Since seeing the poster, I feel much more positive about it. The poster has taken it out of a dead sort of statement that may be a little bit hard to understand and made it very fresh and sort of almost casual. The typography is a very rugged looking typeface. It has a real sort of youthful pop feeling about it and that's very accessible for young people. I think it's fairly easy to understand immediately what the post is about and I think some people are interested in it, some aren't. I'm not quite sure how effective it will be. It doesn't have any smaller information on it that you can read about nuclear disarmament and it it's not really an informative poster, it's more like a do this sort of poster, get there, very simple message. And people will either get it or they won't, depending on whether they want to go or whether they're interested in nuclear disarmament. The colour, yellow and black, very impactful. Sort of positive, but a bit forceful as well, which is really good. And the other colour, green, in the poster also relates really well. So give it a try and see what happens. Okay. Done this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah. You want to get rid of that? This one. Yeah. That should be it. Now what is here? Draw it. I'll go down. Yeah. Right now. Snap's been sent this um, poster to promote the um, peace march on the 31st and the people who sent it want to know what we as students feel about the whole promotion campaign um, and about the poster itself. I think the vote with your feet's great for us kids because like we've got no other way of voting so we're going to go out there and march and tell them what we feel. What about how the rest of you feel? Oh certainly I think this campaign, like the post of this campaign's great. <coughs> I think it's very effective, it makes people come up and say, you know, what is it, you know, and find out more about it. It's got a lot of fun in it, I mean it's not just normal feet, the way they've sort of painted the feet in, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, it's not just know, real boring stuff come along, whereas if they just had normal shoes or normal feet, it would have had the more boring effect. So do you think it would appeal to us snap kids who are going to be putting it around the school and other places? Going to it. Appeal to younger people mostly because it looks more interesting. They've also sent us some uh, stickers, but I don't think many of us drive. These are car stickers. <laughs> um, I think the stickers could have been a different colour perhaps or the image on it could have been larger so that many people driving by could understand exactly what's happening on the 31st of March. That's pretty large, the 31. Maybe there shouldn't be so much writing on it, maybe it should be all um, writing, because I think it's um, fairly crammed into one small sticker. Mm. What do you think about the badges? Um, the badges are okay, but heading is pretty eye-catching but there's nothing about disarmament written on it and I think it would have been better if this badge was transferred onto a t-shirt because it would have been more effective. Yeah because if someone's wearing a badge um, and it hasn't got anything on disarmament on it, a person that sees you in the street's not going to go up to you and say hey what's that about it doesn't even know you. They'll probably just look at it then walk off. They don't know what it's about. Plus the writing's in small. I mean, if you're walking past you wouldn't be able to see it unless you Got yeah, no. <laughs> a couple of pairs of glasses on. <laughs> no one's really going to come up to you and ask yeah. you in the streets. What's it about? Yeah. Um, I don't think this pamphlet is as effective because it hasn't got as many colours. Um, you couldn't put it up as a poster because people wouldn't catch it because they're not colours. 
but there is information on the back that you could use if it was a pamphlet handing out to people in the street because they could read about it. Yeah, it does get the message across. Yeah. But it's um, not as yeah. big. I think they should have had a T-shirt as well as badges and posters. A T-shirt can be worn and everyone can see, whereas, you know, a purse, you put it up on a wall, so people are either going to pass that wall or they're not. And even a badge, I mean... Yeah, that's right, get vandalised. <laughs> even a badge, a person can wear it, but, you know, it's not as definite as a T-shirt. I mean, when you look at someone, you see... If they've got their T-shirt on, you see it straight away. We've got a snap song. Um, it, it's set to the words of the wall, Pink Floyd, to, to the music of the wall, Pink Floyd. And we've changed the words around. And instead of, hey, teachers, leave those kids alone, we've changed the words to, hey, leaders, leave those bombs alone. And we thought that would be appropriate on the T-shirt. Oh, I think it's even purple school, but we use um, key words, really, and that sort of speaks for itself. Um, we also cater for our multicultural school. <laughs> Got some messages in Greek and we want peace, peace no atomic energy. We've done some Arabic posters too. Because there are a lot of images you can use to represent peace and disarmament and that. of the numbers? I really don't know at this stage, but I'd be very surprised if there were less than 150,000. What about this opinion poll? What exactly this, is this for? Well, it's an opinion poll of people who are here today, but it's also the same opinion poll was taken in a number of schools and offices and universities on Friday and in local areas on Saturday. And we're just going to compare how people think. I mean, you think that people in the disarmament movement would have uh, perhaps stronger views than other people. But we already know some of the results from out in the suburbs, and we know that lots of people are just as concerned as people who are here. Are people finding the questions easy, or have you had complaints about the complexity well, some of some people say they're a bit complicated, but of course, if you really want to test people's opinions, you can't always uh, ask them very simple questions. Do people enjoy filling them out, do you think? I think people like to know that their opinions count because the disarmament movement wants people to have opinions that count and too often people feel that government doesn't take enough notice of their opinion. Do you think some people have filled out the opinion poll in their local neighbourhood instead of coming marching or...? No, I don't think so because when we gave them out in neighbourhoods people had an extra question, are you going to march in the march? And some people have come here today and said, oh, I filled that in yesterday. What will happen to it then? We're going to show it to our city council and we're going to show it to our state government and we're going to show it to our national government because uh, the questions are all about the things to do with our survival. 